Welcome to Sailing Liberty! We're really glad you're back. So they show we are in the market for our forever home, new liveaboard, bigger and at least as good as Pierce and Triton. Our okay. Yeah. She just got the engine redone. We redid the wood. Everything is perfect. But the other day we're talking about the situation in the world and what we're going to do as the things move forward. And it came up, I think we're going to need a bigger boat. So it's back up to New York to make a few bucks under harsh conditions for the boat money. And they took me last time to uh, New York and he did the Christie's show. So I got to go and I was really missing New York. But you know, New York wasn't the same anymore. It was empty and it felt dangerous. This is our favorite restaurant. Dollar Oysters used to always be full and lively. Helen is so beautiful. I'm glad we got to see it one last time. Well, you know, we're looking at a certain price range, but you know, in the 20s, but honestly, we need it to be cheaper than that. I gotta go to New York and uh, help the TV network out with its... Uh, with a musical special, I'm gonna design the set and direct the show. Great American artist. Oh, right in Brooklyn. I fly out of New York to Nashville to uh, go do the Country Music Awards. Oh yeah, that's my shot. Flying cameras all over rock concerts and even Country Music Awards. Look at me fly this thing right down into these guys. How's that to start your tune? I love it, and look how cool it is. Boom. And then I fly back to here, and the car's gonna be here, so it, you know it's a circuit. It's gonna be a long time away from Helen, and but we're gonna make some good money and um, then we'll be in better position with our future boating stuff. All right, I'm happy with that. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, learning how to drive this the car. Sleeping bags are delivered. Walking around. The plan is... Ordering equipment. We don't have hypodermia in the boat. Getting us some books to read when it's no internet. Playing with pebbles. Pebbles, what's going on? The cat. Getting myself ukulele for a liveaboard lifestyle for months and months without the internet. <laughs> and now back to you guys. Yeah, we didn't take all pop and it's back on market, you guys. <laughs> it's a mess. We didn't like it. And uh, it's too cold to sail, uh, you know all the way from Chesapeake. Another option is to buy a boat in Florida and the risk that the boat is no good and we just drive all the way there, but the sail is much warmer to Central America. We are looking for good numbers like uh, comfort ratio and ballast. Helen is really taking hold of the numbers yeah. and the sailboat data is like, our, we go to it every day. And the capsize uh, screening formula, we want at least as uh, Hoka has, has uh, 1.73 so if it's a bigger boat it should have a better number see what i mean i always just went by ballast to displacement ratio that was my number but now helen takes that to a whole new level okay guys we have been checking out this uh mai tai 41 catch since mexico it's a weird one looks like viking canoe uh double ender uh, it is full keel center cockpit this uh, interior is like mahogany it's like beautiful and the price has dropped from 49,000 to 25 and now it is ask a price the big Birkins 4108 50 horsepower diesel runs great and has low hours and fuel tank is 200 gallons wow water tank is also 200 gallons we would have so much range weird thing is that they drop all the time price the boat is located in like english florida which is like middle of nowhere it has a great sailing thingy uh, they say um eight foot sail tender so we don't have to row on the islands we can sail overall conditions appears good exterior needs a new coat of paint okay we can deal with that 
and they do a little sanding, they're gonna have a, again a little bright work on his calendar. <laughs> Also, it has the Onan generator, will provide all the backup power needed for extended living and cruising. As you remember, Alpa didn't have the Jenny. That was like a big, big minus. Hey, we've got some experience. We put a lot of work into our Hoke, so we kind of know the systems. We know how boats are fixed and how boats are damaged. Did some passages. Did some passages, did a lot of day sailing. And Pay skate. Thank you, that <laughs> was pretty cool. And we uh, think we may be ready for this. Yeah, and I was always inspired by Ukuranma, my cousin. He was the first uh, circum solo navigator from Estonia, and he won the third place on a Golden Globe race. So I was thinking, always watching him, what the life. Crazy life. And I was hoping I can do it too, you know? And now we are doing it. It's scary, but we are doing it. You can do it. You can do it too. So that's this countryside. He has 56 hectares of the land. Oh, this gonna come in the boat. Of course it is. So this is Estonian flag. Yeah. Do you know that what those colors mean? White is for the pure heart. Yes. Black is for the land. Uh -huh. and blue is for the dreams. Yes. I got the weller. Are our boat books um, still in here? No, they are in the front. So this is all the hard drive. There's Drobo's in here, all the big drives, the fast drives, they're all stacked in here. So I think we should just take them. Not doing anything good here. We have tons of media on them and they're loaded. Want a dictionary? It's American... Uh... English. American English. Yeah, it would be better than no dictionary. Okay. Thank you, Dad. Can you still hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Cool. What about your running rigging? Oh, oh, it's good. It's okay. Good. In fact, I've got a spool of... Line, 500 foot spool line. It goes with the boat. I've uh, never never put it on it, but the, the running rig is good. And, a, and you got a spool line that goes for, for I got, I got, okay. I got a, new, cool. a new spool of line that I bought one time when I had money. <laughs> I Although it is a center cockpit, and I like the sound of what you're saying. So, um, and then we'll have to just take take it one step at a time. I'm looking at right. uh, three different boats right now, and I guess I'm, now yours is one of them, so that's all four. And, uh, and you know, let's just press on with this and see what happens. Okay, let me ask you, well, what, what uh, ad did you see that in? Um, Craigslist. Craigslist, right. Yeah, it's on Craigslist. I'm Charlie. So oh, okay, I'm Charlie. He, oh, he said in the ad, call that's Charlie. It. Oh, he said, I'm listing this for my friend, blah, blah, blah. He's selling his boat. Here it is. Yeah. yeah right, right. His name is Russell. Oh, Russell. Well, thanks to Russell for posting it. Um, yeah, it was right, good to right. find it there. I just I just plugged in Orlando and found you that way. So, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, well, wonderful. Okay, so I'll talk to you um, when you call back, Charlie. I appreciate it. Okay, right. Later then. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. It's good. It's good. I mean, you start, you have to add up all the things that need to be repaired, you know. Um the boat does not look good it looks not Mess. pretty um he says the paint on the top sides which are this part of the boat you know the part you see you see the paint's peeling mm. um and he says it doesn't represent an underlying problem so it breaks her heart to tear down the equipment from hokahe she just got ready yeah it's crazy easy on easy off <laughs> And we don't want to sell her. No, uh, that's not happening. At least so not now. So when the things go back to normal, we're gonna take her to the Grand Rise. Yeah, right back to day sailing around New York and so on, and just mm, having fun. The life. <laughs> gonna roll out of here tomorrow. So this one day is gonna come off. We're taking all this stuff, all this deck hardware, all this type of stuff. It's gotta go with us. 
all the tools. Um, obviously, you're gonna need a lint roller. Um, torque wrench. We got supplies. We got um, all kinds of deck cart. Well, this stuff is specifically, so I gotta be careful. Um, yeah, let's go. A lot of stuff in this boat. You know. yeah, I gotta see what size wrenches I'm using here. The wind vane's tied up tight to the mast, ready to dangle. It was tricky to put on, and now it's gonna be tricky to get off. Now, these are custom tubes that are bent at, for, by Scanmar at the monitor factory. So, these are bent just for this boat to raise the unit up. I'm sure it's easier than putting it on. You don't have to, don't have to line anything up. I don't want to steal everything off this boat. Once you steal some, you might as well steal it all. This is the lazarette locker. It's the stern of the boat. But now we're going to take off all the uh, hardware you see in there. To gain access uh, both sides. A wrench. 716s? Yep. You and they're everywhere, and you found the one. Oh my gosh, you're an amazing woman! You're amazing and smart and beautiful. God, I forgot how miserable this is. The easiest way to do this is just do it as a team. You have to hold it down. Okay, and it's all your... Is it going like more tight, or I don't understand why it doesn't? It's because there's no sealant on the thread. And we got eight of them out. We're gonna get these plates off. There's butyl rubber under all these brackets. In this super, super sub freezing weather, you gotta use a heat gun to get anything loose. So I just put butyl rubber in these holes. Because this boat sits here for years, you know, this deck would get ruined by water getting in. You want something dramatic? Here you go. Show me. Okay. Uh, I think it's like 50 pounds. I am holding no, no, Take the rope. Wow. Good. Boy, it is heavy, isn't it? That is a serious piece of equipment. Outside is so cold. I'm putting my beeps on. Now, back to work. Ready to get your wrench and... Vete luce. We're getting the sucker off of here. That's what matters. These are the hardest thing first. These are new. This used to be plastic, and now they've been replaced. It's stainless steel, watertight. Brackets off real quick, and then we're done with the monitor, ready to take it to the new boat. My discernment tells me that um, he's the kind of person that you should buy a boat from. And he wants to make it happen. I'm just going to take a little bit of this and clog the holes up, although it's underneath. So, and this is also solid fiberglass. Can you see the, some letter marks from when this boat had a different name? Let's see if anyone can figure out what it is, and then we'll tell you. Yes, that's a Y. So the answer is Yankee Spirit. And the hailing port is, oddly, Robin Hood. Butyl rubber really does the trick. You put it around the tops of the bolts, a little strip around the top, and then you put it, cover the whole base, and then you bolt it up. I know it's early, but let's call it a night. Um, I think there's a certain amount of inefficiency in working late at night in the cold and the dark. So why don't we get something to eat, get to bed super early, and get up like before sunrise, have coffee, have our morning time, and then when sun is coming up, we start just going nuts. Okay. Oh my God, can you believe we're gonna be in the tropics with this sucker? Yeah, not in the cold, like minus one. Oh man, forget about it. <laughs> Perfect burger. Sweet, sweet. That's it. Got the washboard's in. I'm going to close the hatch. We're out of the hat. Okay, hey. 
and onto the new boat with a lot of stuff. Sorry, Hokahe. We'll be back, God willing. Well, it looks like this is it. I'm locking up the Hokahe. The tracks are in place for the hatch, so I'm just gonna strap it down in case the uh, tarp tears off. I don't want any water getting inside the boat. And, found a battery tester. Doesn't do us any good here. Running away from a beautiful boat. It's like the craziest thing in the world. But wait until you see the next boat. Talk about a sense of urgency. Charlie says we can have the boat for $10,000. Mystery double under for 10K. 41 foot boat, heavy boat. But the problem is, he's going in the hospital for surgery. He may not make it. And it, if he does make it, he's gonna be out of commission. He can't see anybody for who knows how long, if ever. So this is a once in a lifetime. Charlie said we have until tomorrow to be on his doorstep. I told him we'd be there at one o'clock. My, it's huge. Right? The car. Bada bing, I think we're gonna need a bigger truck. Oh my God, it's a lot of stuff, sweet Mary. Do you think, um, you think it'll all fit on the boat? <laughs> Well, some of it gets installed, some of it's sails, some of it's bed clothes, some of it's paint. We're gonna pack our car and go to Florida fast food and sleepless night. I'm gonna be a map reader and Dad's gonna be a driver. I haven't had fast food in 20 years, <laughs> but this is a special occasion. It's about to change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it should fit. It should fit. Here we go. Hit the road. Thanks for your help, brother. You're a good man. See you in a week. Max, good job, buddy. See you, Helen. We'll see you in a little bit. See ya. All right, be safe, you guys. Thank you. Have a good trip. All right, sweet Barry. Time to hop in, my little princess. Yeah. Oh, you want to take these pants off? Uh, later. Okay. I'm going to hold you to that. Let's roll. I don't even know what goes in a Mai Tai. It doesn't show up on <laughs> sailboat data. I guess I gotta check cocktailrecipes.com. So just saying. <laughs> so that is our option number one. And we can keep our options open though. We have the Kelly Peterson on the horizon. Ooh, there's also some golf stars available. Martin's a good friend. He showed up and just started working. And it didn't take a short amount of time. I mean, that was a couple of hours, right? So, it was perfect, it was right when we were getting discouraged and uh, running out of steam. The whole thing is so mentally draining to just leave, you know, 98% of your stuff behind, not really even sure what you need. We can do stuff to the boat and just start getting ready. We can clean the boat, motor stuff, supplies, whatever. How, well, you're gonna do as little work to the boat at Tampa as we can so that we can do it in Mexico. Where it's cheaper and we can take our time. We'll be there, you know, maybe a week or ten days when we're doing stuff. So that's the plan. Let's get down the hill here, going south from Pennsylvania. We're gonna get as far as we can. We're gonna try to find a hotel to land at maybe around midnight and then get up at like four or five. Just take basically one REM cycle sleep, kind of like a night overnight watch, you know. Just get a cycle in. And, uh, and get on the road because uh, we need to be on time for this appointment because it's our time to see the boat. We need that time to see the boat. And if we take the boat, which we think we will, um, we're going to need to rig the mainsail and put it on the boat because it, it's not on there. Um, and get familiarized real quick with the boat because if the next morning we're going to shove off. Uh, and go to Tampa, I think it's, I haven't mapped it, but it, I think it's going to be one day. We're going to be there in one day, hopefully a short day, and we'll, we'll leave very early so that we can get to the marina in the middle of the afternoon and, you know, say hello and get started with those guys, maybe talk to them a little bit about pulling the boat out the next morning, you know. Um, maybe we won't pull the boat out. Maybe we'll take a swim and, and uh, find out that the bottom is reasonable. And we'll just tough it out until Mexico. And 
then pull it out there where we can stay on the hard for a little bit and dry it out and paint it. Because the problem with doing it uh, in a short turnaround is we're not going to have time to dry it out. And if we need to do work to it, we're really not going to have time for that either. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe we won't even pull it out. Unless it's a total mess and it just needs to be washed. So that's the thoughts right now. Everything is totally speculative at this point, but we just got to press on with some some delusion of uh, what we're going to do and adapt. Okay, guys, I have to look very quiet. Daddy is sleeping in my lap. But we had no time for the hotel on our power nap, and then we're going to have a final push to the floor. Crazy. That is a sight to see. Crazy amusement park at 4 in the morning. Just in South Carolina. Alright, let's keep going south. The sun's coming up soon. Come a long way over the night. We're feeling pretty good. Took a little hour long nap. Had some nice black tea. And of course, Neuro gum. A lot of rock and roll. And chatting with my little kid. Got a long way to go, I guess. I'm not sure how many hours, but I think it's quite a few. It's just about to be seven o'clock in the morning, and it's time to get gas for a second time. It must be a pretty big tank. We're having a pretty good run. Somehow we still have five hours to go. I guess that's nothing compared to fifteen hours. This is a gas, bathroom, and then grab something to eat and back to the room. Instead of 15 hours, it took uh, 19 hours and uh, they took one hour nap. I couldn't sleep at all. I was reading the map constantly and it always uh, tried to uh, get us in the wrong way. So uh, we're going to get a bottle of water. I'm over caffeinated and hopefully we're gonna find a motel somewhere and uh, see if the Mai Tai is our boat. I feel much better. I'm taking a bottle of water since I'm over caffeinated. Hey, maybe tonight we are celebrating. Okay guys, now we have five minutes to get there. Oh, thanks, have fun mate. Charlie is waiting. I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. I can't be late. Okay. Yeah, we're liking the boat so far. The mahogany is awesome. All right, we'll see you next time when we continue our survey of this mysterious double ender. I thought the must so rad. See you next time. On, on Sailing, Sailing Liberty. Liberty. Thanks for watching. If you like, comment. And please subscribe. We're a new channel. Every subscription counts. Thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you on the next show. Sailing Liberty.